We've got a big heavy box from Dumb Fume. This thing weighs over 100 pounds. Let's crack it open. Oh man, this is a monster size battery. <clears throat> this is another battery review. This time we have a monster size 12 volt, 600 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery by Dumb Fume. In a previous video, we reviewed a Dumb Fume 300 amp hour battery, which is this battery right here. And that battery did very well for the price. It was one of the cheapest 300 amp hour batteries you could get at the time, and it still is. And a lot of people really rave about these batteries. In fact, right now it's actually connected to my 48 volt solar power system. It has three other batteries in series to give me 48 volts. So I figured it was time to review another dumb fume battery just to see if they've made any changes. I didn't want to do the same 300 amp hour battery that we did previously. I wanted to go for the big battery, the Mac daddy of 12 volt batteries and that's a 600 amp hour battery. We're starting to see bigger and bigger 12 volt batteries on the market, mainly because with a battery this size, you get over 7,600 watt hours and you only got to make one connection one set of leads and that's it. You don't gotta worry about paralleling your batteries up or any of that. For those of you who wanna stick to 12 volt systems, maybe you're in a camper, RV, big rig semi, which a lot of guys use these for as well. It makes it super easy to have a ton, a ton of capacity and only have to make one connection. And also, the size of this thing is actually amazing for the capacity that we have. Now, as far as specs of the battery, it has a 250 amp BMS, not a Bluetooth BMS, just a standard BMS. They rated at 4,000 charge and discharge cycles. It has a five-year warranty, so there's a little bit of peace of mind there. And Dumb Fume has actually been around now for a little while. It's been on the market for at least the last few years I've been seeing these batteries. So that is a good thing. So if you do have to have any sort of warranty problems with the battery, maybe it'll actually be able to get it warrantied. And it comes in at a weight at 107 pounds. So this thing is a monster. So as far as emissions go, from the handle to the other handle, we're looking at about 25 inches. It is nine and a half inches wide and six it's eight and three quarter inches tall. Now, other than the weight, this thing really doesn't have a con in my opinion, especially if you can fit this size battery in your setup and you don't mind the weight. And the biggest reason is this one battery will replace six of these normal size batteries. We even have a mini battery right here, but if we kind of squeeze all these together, it takes up at least double of the space, maybe even triple of the volume that this battery takes up here. And you only gotta make one set of connections. You don't gotta worry about adding cables to all these batteries and it complicates things and just makes the system look bad versus one little clean set of wires and you're good to go. So that's partially why I really like these big capacity 12 volt batteries. And I'm really happy that we're starting to see a lot more of them on the market. And this isn't even the biggest battery. This is the biggest 12 volt battery that dump fume sells, but there are bigger 12 volt batteries on the market if you wanna go bigger than this. What would you rather have one battery like that or would you rather have to worry about six batteries? Also in the box, you do get the battery terminals, which are the M8 bolts. And we also get a user manual. We're gonna skim through this, see if there's anything interesting in it. Also a quick start guide, tells you about storage and won't turn it upside down. Charge every three months. There's the manual looks like, has a 250 amp BMS, which is good, because you wanna have a good beefy BMS if you have 600 amp hours of battery. You wanna be able to really use it. All the dimensions here, like we went over the weight, 107 pounds. And that's really it, just a lot of good generic battery information. So it's always good to kind of skim through these in my opinion. So in this video, we're gonna fully charge the battery. We're gonna do a full capacity test of the battery at a 0.2C rate, which is gonna be for 600 amp hours, that's gonna be 150 amps continuous. So that's a lot. That's a pretty big discharge test. Then we're gonna do a full current discharge test to see if we can pull the 250 amps without the BMS shutting down. And I'm also gonna to try to pull a little bit over that to see if it has overcurrent protection. Then we're actually gonna open the battery up and kind of see how they have the cells oriented. If I had to guess, this is a 4S 2P pack, so there's probably eight cells in here, and each cell probably is gonna be rated at 300 amp hours, so you're gonna have two of those in parallel and then four groups in series to give you the 12 volts at 600 amp hours. And we're gonna look at the BMS, the overall build quality, and just kind of see if we're getting good value for our money and if we're getting a good durable battery. At the time of this review, this battery sells, if you get it directly from Dumb Fume, you can get it right around $670. If you buy this on Amazon, I think right now it's a little over $700. I would definitely shop around if you're interested in this battery to try to get the best price. Sometimes the website has a better price, sometimes Amazon does. And you guys already know, if you guys are into batteries, the prices of these things fluctuate like crazy. Now in order to charge this colossal battery, we're gonna use a 30 amp 12 volt battery charger. And even at 30 amps, it's probably gonna take about 10 to 15 hours to fully charge the battery. If the battery was completely dead and you had to charge it from zero, this could charge it in 20 hours. Now the out of the box voltage for anyone who's curious is 13.2 volts. All right, there we go. We have a flashing red light. So once this thing's fully charged, we'll start our testing. Okay, I was finally able to get this battery fully charged. What we're gonna do is to test it, we have this little rig I put together with a 3000 watt low frequency pure sine wave inverter. We have a current shunt, everything's set up, ready to go. 
So we're gonna put a 0.2 C load on this battery. All right, so there we go. 0.2 C load to be 120 amps. We're running about 116. I'm gonna let this test run all the way until the BMS and the battery shuts down and we're gonna see our final capacity number. The final capacity number is gonna be displayed right here where it says total amp hours. All right, guys, the capacity test just finished up on the dumb fume 600 amp hour 12 volt battery. And it looks like we got a total of, looks like 651.97 amp hours. Very impressive. Very happy to see that we got over the 600 amp hour rating. I'm curious to see what the cell configuration is inside of this battery as well as what kind of cells they're using in order to get that kind of capacity. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the battery fully recharged again so we can do some high amperage discharge testing now to see if the BMS can support high current discharging up to about 250 to 300 amps. All right, with just the battery charger on, we're pulling 94 amps. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the heater. We're gonna turn the heater on low. We're at 155, 156 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heater on high. Looks like it's settled at around 255 amps. That is 3000 watts on the dot. I'm not gonna be able to pull much more out of that because the inverter is almost maxed out. I'm gonna let it run this load for about five minutes and we're gonna see what happens if it doesn't shut off or if it shuts off. All right, well, we're back. The battery's still running strong, no issues there. Has not shut off over 250 amps. I'm not quite sure what limit this thing would shut off at. I guess now we're gonna open this thing up and take a look at the build quality. Check it out, guys. This thing is an absolute monster. Look at the size of the BMS on this thing. There's four wires going into the BMS. Looks like there's eight cells in there. So this is probably a 4S2P configured pack. So there's two cells in parallel. There's four groups of those, but in series to give you your 12 volt battery. And more than likely, these are either 300, maybe 304 or 314 amp hour cells. I'm gonna try my best to get the whole pack out of the case so we can actually see that. The BMS is ice cold after 250 amps. There is the model ID of the BMS, so if anyone knows what this is, drop a comment, but I always get a lot of questions. People always wanna see the spec sheet or the sticker on the BMS. I don't really see anything besides this little tag. We have a temp sensor right here. This is our balance harness. It is taped right here with a little bit of Kapton tape. Other than that, the wires are just kind of loose, but they are somewhat together. The batteries are being compressed with the plastic shipping straps. That's what I call them at least. And it looks like they have plates. There's actually a metal plate right there. And then on the other side of the metal plate is some foam against the case. Same with this side. You can kind of see the plate there, the foam, and then the side of the case. Big thick layer of foam on the back side as well, just to give it a little bit extra cushion. All right, I'm going to try to remove this thing out of the case. All right, I think we got it. We have nice, big, beefy bus bars. This one looks like it's a little bit bent. I don't know if that's gonna show up on video, but there's a little bit of a wave in that. So I'm not really sure what that's about. And then there's also a wave here and a wave here. I would be concerned if it pulled any harder up, it might damage the spot welds, but the spot welds do seem intact and the battery still pulled capacity. So I don't think that's an issue. The battery vents are not covered. Balance harness is bolted, not soldered. Main negative terminal, you have two sets of two cables. These look like, they say seven gauge, interesting. Same for your positive. Going straight to your positive terminal. There also is sheets between each cell to give it some insulation, very important. All right, we're gonna remove this to see if we can see a QR code. And we do see a QR code. It says 3.2 volt, 314 amp hours. So these are 314s, that's pretty cool. We were able to get 650 amp hours, so that does make sense. A very healthy 314 should easily be able to pull 320 to 330 amp hours. I went ahead and typed our QR code into the QR code decoder and it says they're Cornex cells. I believe we tore another battery apart that also had Cornex cells, 314 amp hour. They are from July of this year. So the cells are not very old. There is a website, but more than likely it's all gonna be in Chinese. Let me know what you guys think about the Cornex cells personally. I don't know a whole lot about them, but if you guys have heard of those cells, are they any good? One thing I did notice is at the bottom, this is gonna be the bottom of the battery. This is gonna be sitting directly in the case. There is no foam. So I would advise if you're gonna be moving this battery around a lot, be really careful of slamming this thing down or putting it down on something pointy because you could dent and damage the cells. All of these appear perfectly fine. Also, the cells do not appear swollen or puffed or anything like that. They all look in really good condition. Personally, I'm gonna set this battery up and never move it around, but if you do plan on using this in like a camper or something, maybe put a little extra foam underneath the battery case itself when you go to mount it. That way there's a little bit of isolation between the battery cells and you know your environment around it, I guess you could say. I stuck the temp sensor in a little frozen thing of ice, and as you guys can see, the charger went green, which means the low temp cutoff does work. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the sensor out and warm it back up, and there we go. Now the charger's flashing red again. Put it back in the ice again. And there we go, we get the green light. That's gonna wrap it up on the Dumb Fume 600 amp hour battery. It's pretty crazy that they make 12 volt batteries this big. It's very, very heavy. So do keep that in mind if you're gonna plan on run a massive battery like this. It's really awesome that you can take this one battery and replace six 100 amp hour batteries. It can really simplify a lot of things. And if you know you want a lot of capacity, I would almost rather spring and go ahead and buy this 
Also, as far as cost, if you can buy these for around 600 bucks, I think it makes it a really good value, especially because you're getting over 7,600 watt hours of energy. And if you put four of these together into a 40 volt battery, you would have a 40 volt battery that's 30 kilowatt hours. And that is a lot of energy. And potentially you could do all that for under 2,500 bucks. Like I said, if you can find these below 600 bucks, I actually had someone comment on the video when we reviewed the 300 amp hour dumb fume battery. And they said that they bought one of these for I think $584. But like I said, you really have to shop around to get the best deal on these batteries. Hold full capacity has 314 amp hour cells. As far as build quality, it is a little bit lower quality, but that's kind of what I would expect. I don't think it's so bad to where it would hinder the function of the battery. And personally for my money, I think it's worth it. Some people might not like how those bus bars looked or, you know, there's some other small things that you could tell it's a cheaper battery. They should have probably put a little bit more foam on the bottom, you know, just kind of small things like that. But I think overall the battery is pretty good and it actually did okay in all the testing that we did. Anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think about this battery. If you guys are using this battery in the real world, please leave your thoughts and experiences in the comments. I'm gonna try to get some more big capacity 12 volt batteries because we've done a lot of 100 amp hour capacity batteries on the channel and I'm trying to kind of get some bigger ones and also we can do some cooler projects with bigger batteries. I know we've done a ton of battery reviews on the channel but I do have a lot of ideas going forward for what we can be doing as far as other videos so thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video I very much appreciate that and I'll see y'all in the next video.